What's up, what's up, what's up? It's your boy, dc 2 Cool, back again for another video. Today we are doing the Dragon Ball Z Xenoverse review, or just Dragon Ball Xenoverse. So let's go ahead and jump right into it. You can pick up the five races in this game. Majin, Saiyan, Earthling, Namekian, or the Freezer race. Now while I do prefer the, the actual name Arosian, Arkosian, however you pronounce it for Dragon Ball Online, um, Freezer race will do just as well. It will suffice, I suppose. But you can pick your character's height, body type, eyes, hair, pupils, nose, mouth, jaw, ears is very detailed it's very it's very well done and especially for you know a true dragon ball you know creative character i like that bs that was ultimate thing kaichi is very very well done i'm very pleased very happy with this game custom, custom creator this custom character creator it could use more options a lot more but it has a lot a lot of options that you start off with that you unlock other stuff later on as you go the, you can even pick characters, uh, gender for some races such as female or male earthling, female or male Majin, female or male human. Uh, the Makians are only males. Uh, as far as we know, with the Frieza race, they're only males as well. We saw his father, we saw Frieza, we understand they're asexual race, so we, are, we assume that they're only males as well come from eggs or something along those lines. But the customization options they have are great. Uh, it's very well detailed. It's very well put together. Uh, hopefully with the expansion or something we can get more Saiyans to go Super Saiyan 1 or Super Saiyan 2. Unfortunately it's on Super Saiyan 3 or Super Saiyan 4 which I would love to have seen in this game but unfortunately that is not an option. Boo is also limited. You can get Fat Boo or a female module. You cannot get Skinny Boo or Kid Boo or a fuse boo or something like that. Unfortunately, I really wish that was a feature in the game, but as far as the core base, they've done a great job. You can also change the skin complexion of your character from anywhere from the whitest of white to darkest of dark. And this is uh, for all races, not just, you know, the, the Majins or the Makians, but if you want to have a purple human, you can do that. You know, so it kind of gives you a sense that you can create whoever you want pretty much. Um, hopefully we'll see an official Android race in the next game, maybe some kind of expansion pack. That would be really lovely. But you can also change the color of the clothing that your character wears, which is pretty nice. Although some options are limited. In the item shop, you'll be able to acquire items that will boost your health or your allies health in real time in battle. Or acquire new Z cells that can give you power ups, things of that nature. New clothing for you to either unlock in game or you can buy off the store and unfortunately you cannot preview what the outfits look like before you buy them and that's baffling. You can mix and match any pair of shoes with any pair of pants or any wristbands or any shirts or hats etc so on and so forth but unfortunately you can't remove that little screen to see the outfit behind it. It's stupid. This is a serious problem with this game right here because you cannot edit the color of every item. If it's shaded out, it means you cannot edit the color of it, which makes absolutely no sense at all. The time and space delivery, one of the standout features of this game. If you and a friend have an item y'all want to swap, or he has an item he wants to give you, or vice versa, as long as you're both connected to the multiplayer lobby, you can do that. Even Bandai Namco can give you things. I receive the Dragon Ball for free. Parallel quests. Or the side quest you can play when you're done with your storyline, or play them doing your storyline. It doesn't matter. You can play them anytime. So of the three players cooperatively, including yourself, and y'all can play these together and have lots of fun. It's amazing playing with your friends in this game. It's so much fun. Most fun I've had in a Dragon Ball game in a long time. And with this, this is mostly your skills and items, Z souls, supers, ultimates. And it's almost like a destiny system. You can play it multiple times, you get a high rank, but still not get anything. They really need to address that. But overall, it's still a lot of fun. Here's where you can purchase accessories at. You want to get a scouter, a ninja katana, a hat, anything like that. 
It doesn't do much, but it's fun to look at. The story mode is by far the hardest in any Dragon Ball game thus far. It's, oh, it's actually to the point where it's a little OP at times. These characters are way too overpowered. You got, they have this super, just crazy armor on, and you gotta break down the defense and the stamina until you can even get to their health. Sometimes it feels just like a little ridiculous. You know, it really can't be completely one-sided at times. And you really need to find a better kind of balance to this type of, if you want to be hard and challenging, that's fine. But you cannot have it be challenging to the point where you have to be almost max level just so you can progress a storyline in the middle of the story, not even towards the end of the story, but just, you know, it's just a little too hard sometimes. Now, mind you, I got past it and everything, but it's, it's, it has to be a balance. It has to be a balance. But other than that, the story mode was actually refreshing. It was nice to have something new finally in the Dragon Ball community, something we can actually enjoy that's different, especially when you with your own creative character in the fray, you know, making their things different, shaking things up. And I like the twists and outcomes on things and how they came out. And you see basically in the scroll before his mission what was going to go down before you go into it to see the alternate storyline. So you jump in and try to fix it up the best way that you can, you know what I mean? Anyone who knows Budokai knows Kenji Yamato and his great musical scores. There's only really two songs I like in this game. It's weird because it's by stage instead of able to slick what you want, but check out these songs. The gameplay is really good in this game. I like it. You got your super guard attacks. You got counter attacks in this game. You got, you know, grabs. You can lead into an ultimate attack. You set up right with the right character. You got a lot of stuff you can do in this game. It's very good. I'm enjoying it. You know, some bugs in this game. Some things need to be fixed, tweaked, adjusted for sure. And we'll get into that in just a moment. Far too often in this game, especially a lot when you play online multiplayer, does the game just go batshit crazy. Dudes will get caught between, you should do right in the face of a blast in some kind of way to magic, magically get caught between the middle of your blast and you. It's just like, okay, really? Or attack, if you had them targeted for, you know, you're locked on, will just miss really for no reason. You know, it's really some bugs in this game. Some things that they could definitely fix and need to fix. And it sucks, you know, but it's not a game breaker for me. It really isn't. Because, number one, this is Dent's first ever full 3D game. I expected it to be a little shaky, at the least. And I actually expected it to be as good as it is, honestly. So, a few bugs here and there. You know, every game has bugs. It happens, especially for the Dragon Ball community, for the Dragon Ball fans. We know firsthand of all the games that we've played, the first title in the series of these games usually is always the weakest one. And Xenoverse is already a really good game. So the sequel for this game is going to be crazy good. Really, really good. I'm already excited for it, although this is the, you know, the first title and DLC is coming out and everything. And I like also about that too. I will say the way they handle GT is pretty well too. A lot of people might like the fact that they feel like they're on disc or that you have to, the way you have to unlock them, which you have to be all the parallel courses to get Goku, and you have to, you know, wish for the GT characters. But, I mean, if you're not a trophy whore, then it doesn't matter because some people who aren't trophy whores and don't like GT, you know, hey, you don't have to get them. You don't have to worry about being missions to get them. You don't have to worry about playing with them. You can completely avoid GT if you want to. So for people like me who actually like GT, actually want to play these characters and stuff, I can go on my way to get them, and then I can go play with, you know, somebody who doesn't like GT at all. So when they get their asses whooped by somebody like me who likes GT, I want to hear their bitching and moaning about all oh, that character's OP, he's broken, blah, blah, blah. 
because you decided you didn't want the character. So, hey, <laughs> you know, you didn't buy the season pass or whatever the case would be. You didn't want to lock them. You know, so, hey, I like the way they handled it. So, now I both bitches about GT. Don't have to even deal with GT at all if they really don't want to unless they want a trophy. But other than that, forget them. But this gameplay is really good. This is a multiplayer match, as you see, with me and a couple of my friends. And it's smooth for the most part. And I will say, as of the time of this review, the servers for this game have been cleaned up. It was, at one point, for a better part of a month, or going on a month, a fight every day, every single day. But now, nine times out of ten, you log on, take you a couple seconds, get in, you stay in, no problems. Still some server issues that will kick you out every once in a while, your blue moon. But for the most part, it's been cleaned up, and they're still working on it. So, and they gave everybody free Dragon Balls and everything, so that's kind of cool. So, they're aware of the issues, they are working on it, they're trying to get things together. So, I'm going to go ahead and say, this game is pretty freaking sweet. I'm enjoying it, and the gameplay is nice. Like I said, a couple issues, a couple glitchy issues here and there, but they might not be able to patch them out. They might be able to patch them out, hopefully. We'll see in the future. Because they have at least a bug fix that have cleaned it up a little bit. So they are paying attention to the game. Then they have just thrown it out to the wolves. So we'll see how much more they support this game. Getting from point A to point B in this game isn't very fun. You, all you can do is run, 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 and run some more. I don't know why there isn't an option for fast travel or instant transmission. You know, I mean, it's Dragon Ball Z. If not, so we could just fly to we wanted to go at full speed. You know, it doesn't make much sense. They really need to craft a better system than this. Just running past everybody, NPC, or actual real people. A lot of them just stand around regardless. It's boring. How you get Dragon Balls in this game has to be one of the most tedious things in the world. You have to farm to get Dragon Balls in this game. There is no smart way or just easy option like back in Tinkachi 3 to just break a building and get a Dragon Ball. Oh no. They have missions where you recover Dragon Balls. But you have to actually be that Thai Patrol Warrior, who's a, a, a AI opponent. Hopefully they'll pop up, unless you do Mission 12 right here, I'm showing you now. You know they'll pop up or not for sure. And beat them, if you see a key item, that means you have a Dragon Ball. Now one thing about this game is it's just mind-blowing, baffling, and I'll never understand. I don't know who in the world designed this this way. I don't know who in the team thought this was a good idea. But uh, having one versus one multiplayer offline-wise, world tournament stage only, is just nothing short of full-blown retarded. I do not understand how do you make such a ignorant decision. You know, you can make the argument that, well, nobody plays offline anymore, blah, blah, blah. It don't matter. If I want to play with my friends, or let's suppose I have a brother, which I do, you know, I want to play offline with, you know, on the Namekian stage, but I want to explore it. Maybe we want to discover things together. Whatever the case may be, we should have that option. That makes no sense. It, I don't I don't understand it. I mean, it's not a huge deal because majority of the time I do play online. I have played offline for buddy, two buddies actually, twice offline. The World Tournament stage was the only option you get. But it's just, it's, this is just ridiculous. And also one thing this universe this is up on is the ally system. When you're in the storyline, for example, the Android saga, you have to keep Trunks alive, which I hate babysitting the missions. You know, you can't bring yourself back up, even if you have an item or anything, you have to keep him alive based on what he his own health. You can't add to it, you can't take away from it, you can't boost his stats so he has a stronger chance to survive. Some missions you can, some missions you can't. But a lot of the storyline missions you can't, you just have to keep them alive. And that'd be fine if they weren't so useless. All they do is get wrecked. All they do is get killed. And they get killed fast. It's like they have they can't hold their own for nothing. It's crazy. It's like they should have just made that cooperative play. I don't understand. If you have to play with somebody, just let us play with a friend. Maybe that person, you know. Even they just have to be the person within the storyline. Let, let them be that person. That's better than playing with a useless AI member who who barely gets any hits in. And then just gets killed, and we got to keep returning the mission. That was terrible. That's something he definitely needs to address in the sequel.
And some of the stages sometimes in the universe, some of the stages feel too small. You fight somebody and all of a sudden, next thing you know, you're hitting the wall, you know, the invisible wall or, you know, the ceiling, which I believe is way too short. You can maybe be about 10 feet in the air. It's way too short. It's probably the smallest ceiling on any Dragon Ball game. They really need to address that. And they always too small on the maps. It depends on which map you play. Some of them actually feel kind of big, but most of them feel pretty small or medium size, not big enough for what they should be, especially if you want to add a three versus three mechanic or a two versus two, you know, so on and so forth. So for a multiplayer of that caliber, those maps need to be bigger for sure. Cause ain't no ain't nothing worse than bumping into a bunch of different people and stuff all the time. That 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 can get ridiculous. But it doesn't happen all the time. But the the size of the maps I think should be addressed. I think it should be about twice the size that they are. You know, nice size maps. Especially if you plan on adding to that, maybe I can battle Z, four versus four, add you no know, two more people to the fray, or maybe even five versus five. Because sometimes, again, in the story, what I'm referencing referencing to, they have some with five versus like one or something. Not having the ability to have your character be able to talk in this game in the storyline, it's just silly. Even Ultimate Team Kaichi got that right, but it's very, very limited creative player. It doesn't make sense at all. The destruction on the game is laughable, quite frankly. Sometimes it's pretty cool. You can destroy, like, uh, the glass, and it's like this little uh, tunnel type of level on the Capital Corporation. You know, you can destroy... Uh, you know, some poles and stuff. You can knock dudes in the cars, they blow up, or whatever. Some of the structure is pretty cool. But the main destruction in, in the game, like as far as like the ground, rock, stuff like that, it's just laughable. It, <laughs> it's just, it really is just laughable. Like, you you can do a sweet move, a big ultimate attack, and it'll turn this huge crane to the ground, and then it resets in like two seconds. And maybe that's part, part, you know, partly due to last gen, you know, PS3 to 60. You know, being, you know, not as fast, not as much RAM, not as much memory and stuff as the PS4, Xbox One, PC. So maybe they reset it like that to save memory for those systems. Which, if you ask me, I don't see why you can just have two teams then make the game for next gen, another team make the game for last gen. That way it doesn't hold it back. Instead of cutting corners for next gen version to, to meet the requirements of last gen. Um, that's just me, but so it, it's not a huge deal though. It, it isn't a game breaker. It's more of a nitpick because when I'm playing the game and I'm fighting and stuff, the destruction really doesn't bother me that much, honestly. But it would be nice to see more destruction in the game, especially if you want to have it actually do something and then just reset. You might as well just not, not have to do anything to begin with instead of just trolling me like, ah, reset it. So that's that. And one thing the Xenoverse likes is characters. As far as some of the variations of the characters, you don't have Majin Vegeta, and I get that you have an alternate storyline. That's why these characters never, you know, came about because he didn't end up becoming Majin Vegeta. You know, Boo Tanks, Boo Han. You know, he never absorbed Gohan, never absorbed Piccolo and Go Tanks and everything because he, he made him go straight to Kid Boo in the story. But even then, you have to acknowledge the fact that we know these characters exist, we know these characters are very important to the story, we know these characters happen. If they had released really some kind of free DLC for these characters, that'd be kind of cool. A way to stay in good favor and good faith with the gamers, like, oh yeah, we know this, you know, these guys actually exist and stuff. We made them, you know, on the side for you. You can get them for free. But we want to do something different with the story. If it makes sense, we didn't include those versions of the characters. Or we should just include the characters regardless anyway, because we know that they're you know, actually part of the story, part of the canon, and it doesn't make sense. I mean, you have characters like Vegito in the game, which you can unlock during a parallel quest, who actually, you know, didn't actually have any time in the storyline, because like I said, Super Boo never went, you know, uh, Super, Super, well, he never came Super Boo, he was just, just, well, take away his regular form is Super Boo, but he never absorbed Gohan. So, if they have Vegito in the game when they never absorbed Gohan, you can still get him. They could have done parallel quests to unlock Majin Vegeta and everybody else too, you know. There was definitely enough quests. There's more quests coming in DLC. See like what made sense to me. You can also register teams in this game. The goofy thing is you have to keep registering a team every time you go into a lobby. It's just be able to save a team of you and your buddies or you and random people or whatever the case may be. So you have to Take what your, you know, 
private slides, no private slides, three, two, whatever the case may be. Uh, you can search for people in the lobby by race, my just female, my just a male, earthling male, earthling female, whatever the case may be, the level, um, you know, things of that nature. And then you guys can go into a team together. When you actually start to a match, you guys will actually be able to go into a match based on whoever set the team up. We don't have to do the traditional invite system. Overall, Dragon Ball Z Universe is a really good game. A couple flaws hold it back from being possibly the greatest Dragon Ball game yet. Because I'll tell you right now, I think this game is probably better than King Actually 3. I'm just going to be honest with you. It has all the tools, the successor, and the true game that we all wanted to be. There's some, some flaws and some bugs that hold it back from being that. But with the sequel and some reworking of the engine and a couple things they need to change or, to, or work around a different way or tweak, this game could be the game for the Dragon Ball fans. It's definitely on the cusp of that greatness. So for me, I'm going to give this game an 8 out of 10. And... I can't wait to see what they do next. Alright, thanks for watching. Like, subscribe. Peace.